getting well. Well, that, that sounds like such a roller coaster of emotions. First finding out you have cancer, then thinking it's three years, and then thinking, well, I've got more time, and yeah, now it, working towards health. Yeah, it's, uh, I, I'm, I'm trying to capture every day. I'm keeping a blog myself or a, a diary every day because it is what you say. I mean, it's a roller coaster. I go from you know really great aspirations to all of a sudden, oh, my God, what am I dealing with here and, um, and everything in between. Wow. Now, going back to the hairstyling, which is your passion, you had a beautiful head of hair. Was it difficult for you to lose your hair during the chemo? You know, I've, had, I've always had long hair because it was, you know, it was curly and it was great long. And uh, before I lost my hair, after I had my first chemo treatment, I went into one of our salons and had my head shaved. And I thought it was going to be really traumatic. And I actually liked it. I, uh, and then when it started falling out, I had it, you know, taken down to about a half inch. I, I loved it. And, uh, and then when it started falling out, I ended up just shaving it. But um, I think when it comes back after treatment now, I'll still keep it really short because it's, it's like a Medal of Honor wearing, uh, <laughs> wearing a bald head. Unfortunately, I've got a, a good shape, so it, it works well. <laughs> but it was kind of an identity crisis at first for me, but I was... I was surprised at how unattached I was to it, especially, you know, we do a lot of women in our salons uh, where we go through this ritual of, of sh uh, shaving their head and really going through it as a ritual. And, um, you know, it's devastating for a man, of course, but for women, I just, uh, I, my heart goes out to them. Wow. Now, you've been posting video updates on your condition on your Facebook page. Why did you decide to do that? Well, so many people, what I found, and I was, I was the same, I was so ignorant. I, I've been surrounded by, my mother had breast cancer, my dad had cancer, but I didn't know what I didn't know. And uh, so, so many of my friends and people at Jude, my colleagues, um, you know, they kind of feared the worst. They imagined that I was laying in bed with an IV drip or something, and I wanted to show them that I was, you know, becoming healthier and kind of, you know, educate them along the process. So... Being back in Minnesota now, we've been back here since April, my family and I, and we have a lot of friends in Maui and, you know, around the world that um, have really been concerned and, and so on. So I wanted to update people and um, really kind of educate them along the way. Well, has it helped you as well? I mean, does is reaching out to others an important element in your wellness strategy? Yeah, and it's amazing how um, I'm rather shy, actually, and uh, I don't mind being in front of an audience and sharing the purpose of day making. But personally, I'm not one to, you know, go on Facebook and put my life out on, you know, to the public. But I just felt like, you know, it felt like there was a reason to do it, and um, uh, for other people as well as myself, I love uh, hearing other people's stories and the support that comes back. I'm trying to support other people that have, you know, discovered it or are, you know family or friends of people that have it and give them some insights that they may not be able to share as easily. Um, but how it comes back to me and um, blesses me is, uh, is important. Well, speaking of those insights, one, what insights can you offer to people who are dealing with cancer or any other health crisis for that matter that maybe you didn't know before you were diagnosed with cancer yourself? Well, the, the first thing that they tell you is to not have any stress in your life. <laughs> so uh for me the greatest lesson in it was how do you how do you lower stress when emotionally there's always this monkey on your back of what if you know mm -hmm. and so what i did was and kind of an aha that i had was how important every single day is and really to just live day to day and that every day from now on is gift and and so that makes three years seem like an awful long time. It makes, you know, living with cancer for 10 years or 20 or the rest of my life, you know, a long time. And um, uh, what, what I've noticed and what I, what I take, um, you know, spending time at Mayo and seeing five, six, seven-year-old kids with the same condition is heartbreaking. So for me, the lightness of being comes from understanding that I've had the opportunity to live a, little, a really full life. And whether you're 15 or 30 or 70, you look at, um, I look at the quality of life that I've had and take uh, comfort in that if tomorrow was my last day, I've had a really, really great life and I've contributed in a really important way. And I think people that freak out about it are ones that, you know, they're, 
they die with the song still left in them, so to speak, yeah. as Jim Dyer would say. And uh, I've just been really fortunate that I discovered day making at a at the age of 26, and I've been working on that and feel really purposeful in it. So I, I don't get too stressed out over my future, knowing that what I've done has been significant enough. Now you you spoke of April 21st of getting the correct diagnosis that gave you a new lease on life, and that was just eight days before your 50th birthday, so that must have been quite a birthday present. Well, yeah, I mean, on one hand, we were planning on, I was going to travel around the world with my kids this year, you know, it was going to be a big year, and we were going to celebrate, and, you know, all of those things become really small compared to getting the news that you've got a new lease on life, so to speak, so um, it was a great great uh, way to spend my birthday. Good. I have a way to turn 50. <laughs> now, you've touched on it briefly, but uh, now that the initial shock has worn off, you've got this good news, um, you're on your way to recovery, do you see your cancer now as a blessing or a curse or somewhere in between? A uh, bump in the road. Okay. You know, I, 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 it's, it's a blessing in many ways, I suppose, but... Um, it's it's hard to wrap your arms around that or wrap your mind around getting um, counting it as as a benefit because the ravaging effect that it has on your body and so on and so forth. Um, it's taught me a lot, um, but I I think that um, you know it awakened me in a certain sense you know, to new possibilities and how lucky I've been in my life and so on and so forth. So you know I, I suppose a blessing is more than a curse, but. Um, I wouldn't wish it on anyone, certainly. So in some ways, would you say that your experience with cancer has made you a better person? No. <laughs> no? <laughs> no. I mean, I, the easy question would be yes and how much it's done. But, um, you know, it's the first uh, few months I was dealing with a lot of anger mm -hmm. and resentment and why me and I've contributed so much to you know, the world in a positive way, how could this come back? There were all those things. Um, uh, so that surprised me at how just how pissed off I was that, you know, you know, you know, asking God, what in the world is, is this all about? Um, uh, but then, you know, finding my way back to, you know, being more centered about it and, and trying to learn the lessons in it and so on and so forth. Um, you know, I suppose it has been more of a benefit, but I, it, it's, it's hard to wrap your arms around it when you're dealing with uh, the possibility that you might be not here. And, and that's um, the God's honest truth. Yeah. Is, uh, I still um, wonder why, and, and there's, I try to make the most of it, but there's not much to make of it, yeah. honestly. Well, so it has made you more introspective. You've gotten to know yourself better, or... Is that again just a bump in the road, and you already were awakened to that? Yeah, I think I think it. I think that my my past has allowed me to treat it as a bump in the road rather than such a, a huge significant thing. But um, I've certainly learned. I've I've had the time and the discipline to be more focused on going inward and um, realizing what what's next for me. Um, you know, I got a letter from a dear friend, and she said, this is just giving you credibility for what's next. Mm -hmm. And that was a really great way for me to look at it was, um, you know, when I wrote my book, it's about my life as a daymaker. And I say, I used to have two theories on raising children. Now I have two children. I don't have theories anymore. Yeah. So I feel like, you know, I've been put in this place to experience this in a real way. And then be able to share that with others because, you know, it's not a theory for me now. It's, it's, uh, I, I am a cancer survivor. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to figure out the best way that I can uh, share that with people that are, you know, newly diagnosed or friends of people that are dealing with, um, you know, the possibility of losing a loved one. Well, David, this is uh, great. I really appreciate your sharing your insights. I know that it will help and inspire others. Uh, speaking of that, how can people get in touch with you and see your video updates? Uh, if you go to YouTube, the easiest way is just go to YouTube and uh, put in David Wagner in the search, mm -hmm. and you'll you'll see I've got various segments of uh, when I was first diagnosed and so on, and then a uh, slideshow. I'm working on a, a book called Faces of Cancer, and there's a 
there's a video in there of a slideshow of um, some of the images that will be in the new book. Wow. So the easiest is go to YouTube and uh, view it on YouTube. Just search David Wagner. Well, that's terrific. Thank you so much for sharing your story. It's uh, it's going to be very helpful to others, I know. It's going well, to make a great work. <laughs> well, I, I, I can't... Uh, I, I read your blog and uh, get your emails, and I, you're doing great work as well. So I really appreciate that. Well, Made thank my day. you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Bye bye. Take care.